football. And Ryan Flournoy, this guy will be one of the best players on the field today. He can play at most Power 5 programs. Now Simo needs both these guys to play the best football of their careers tonight. Well, Kansas State won the toss and deferred. For Simo, they are without Daylin McDonald, their primary right receiver, as well as punt and kick returner, out with a toe injury. So Daryl Smith back deep, and that's going to go into the end zone, the kickoff, and the touchback. Well, the third member of our crew down in the heat, Tori Petri. We're going to try to keep you cool down there, Tori. But how about Simo? They've got the jewelry to prove they had a great season in 2022 as well. Yeah, take a look at this hardware. This is what Simo got for winning the Ohio Valley What's Conference Championship Simo? last year. A lot of thought went into making this ring. Take a look at the inside. It has everybody's name on the inside of it. Signifies the slogan they have that says, you sign off on everything that you do for this team. And then they've got these two diamonds on the front to signify the first team from SEMO to leave this school with two conference championships. Best Art. part of winning a title there, huh, Tori? You get the jewelry. Flornoy, the intended receiver. Jacob Parrish there incomplete on the first play of the game. You should take a look at Paxton DeLaurent. Now in his second season, Adam is the starter at SEMO. He's a big play quarterback, but talking to the coaches, they want to see him just play within the system today. He doesn't have to create too much. He gets in trouble when he tries to extend plays with his legs. He needs to just let the system come to him and take the easy throws today. Going to hand it off to Geno Hess trying to run left. He'll get about a yard. Well, it's going to be a third down and long for the Red Hawks right out of the gate. Simo needs this run game to get going today with Geno Hess, who's one of the best players on their team. They can't be in the third and longs against a defense like Kansas State's. He stacked over two receivers down to the near side. DeLorean under pressure is hit, and he is dropped. Sacked back at the 22-yard line. Austin Monroe and Damian Alalio there to bring him down for the sack. You're going to see Damian Alalio at number 56 inside, gets some penetration, keeps working. This defensive line swarms to the football. It's one of the strengths of this team. Alalio and more there, a five yard loss. So Phillips Brooks back to receive the punt at the 32 of Kansas State. Adam Heston to punt. A low kick takes a bounce at the 50 and a SEMO roll. Going to keep going inside the 35. And it is down at the 33. So after a three and out for the SEMO offense to begin the game, pretty good starting field position for Kansas State. And that offense led by Will Howard. I want to see Will Howard take the easy completions today. Of, of everything he did well last year, his completion percentage under 60%. That's because of all the shots they take down the field, the big arm throws he makes. Today, spread the football out, get it to your playmakers in space, and say, my athletes are better and faster than your athletes. It's DJ Giddens, the running back, who starts out in the backfield. Emotion Brooks faked the handoff to him, now trying to pass it to him, but deflected and still, somehow still found Brooks, but he's going to be dropped for a loss by Joe Edrick Lewis back inside the 25 yard line. They try to get Philip Brooks the ball in space all the time. They bring him in motion there, give him a little swing pass, but a great job swarming to the football by Simo. So they lose nine yards on that, second down and 19. The Wildcat 24 yard line. Bring in Ward this time. Treshawn Ward, two backs. Hand off to Ward. Here's the Florida State transfer. Broke one tackle and gets up across the 40. Joe Edrick Lewis tracking him down, but he gains about 17 yards. Going to set up a third down and about two. We're going to see a ton of this from Kansas State. See two running backs in the game here. DJ Giddens and Treshawn Ward. Giddens leading the way. Giddens stumbling forward, and he should have enough and will have enough for the first down. Got it by about an extra yard up to the 44. This is going to be the one-two punch we see all year from Kansas State. Replacing Deuce Vaughn is the task they have to figure out on offense. As we talked to the coaches, they said, you don't replace a guy like Deuce Vaughn. It's not possible. But with the talent they have in that room, Trayshawn Ward, the transfer from Florida State, and DJ Giddens, they feel really good about the productivity in the run game. Brooks is the receiver out wide up top with Giddens in the backfield. 
Now Brooks comes in motion. Actually, that's Jaden Jackson in motion and running straight ahead. Giddens once again gets right about to midfield before he's met by Joe Edrick Lewis and Christian Furman, the weak side linebacker. He gains six. Now, this is the time. They love to take shots down the field around the 50 yard line crossing over it a little bit second and short. High snap and we get a flag to stop the play. Our first penalty of the game Our officiating crew our referee Henry Johns. False start offense number 57 77 five yard penalty. Still second down. That's on the right tackle Carver Willis who is place, uh, playing in replace of Christian Duffy who is going to be the right tackle. Duffy is out with a kind of a foot ankle injury. So a very experienced offensive line that has come back for K-State but Willis getting the opportunity to start in lieu of the injured Duffy. Ben Sinnott motions. Pick, they pick up the blitz Howard finds the open man that's RJ Garcia and he'll have a first down to the 45 wrapped up by Ty Leonard picked up five needed four for the first down they move the chains RJ Garcia with a great job of just finding the open zone there Simo's playing zone coverage and Will Howard identifies it delivers him a strike they go empty with five wides Howard looking to throw far side a strike to Senate the tight end slash fullback Oh, give him forward progress up to the 40 of Simo and a gain of five. Right there by Lawrence Johnson. Really good player. Their strong safety number seven. Ben Sinnott is one of the best players they have on offense. Tight end. Mel Kuyper just ranked him the number three tight end going into the 2024 NFL draft. He needs to get his touches today. Five, six, seven touches. Make sure he's involved in the passing game. Jackson and Brooks up top. Sean Ward's in the backfield. Senate motions out. Throw going in that direction. They set up a screen there for Jaden Jackson. And the senior transfer from Ole Miss. Brought down by Donye Taylor. Gain of five again. Another first down. We just talked about Ben Sinnott in the passing game right there. They motion him out to the right to go lead block for the screen out wide. This is a guy who's really a Swiss Army knife. Can do it all for Kansas State. possession of the game for the Wildcats after Simo a three and out on their first possession. Long count this time high snap Howard Corral throws out to the far side Brooks getting a block on the edge from Jaden Jackson. And mark him out at the 33 yard line so a pickup of just a couple. This is exactly what I talked about when Will Howard ran out. We haven't seen a shot down the field yet. We haven't seen him throw a deep ball. These have been easy completions. Get the offense moving. Get some momentum going in game one of the year. Howard pulls it out of the belly of Ward. Now he's going to take that deep shot in the end zone. Jaden Jackson touchdown. There it was, Adam. They pulled it out of the holster just as you were talking about. When are we going to see a deep shot? Well, what sets that up is the short passes in the run game leading up all the way down the field. You're going to see the play action, the great pocket by the offensive line. Will Howard has no one near him. Jaden Jackson just beats him with his legs, run, runs right by the guy. We call that a mailbox. Throw your hand up like a mailbox, and then you're wide open for the touchdown. Chris Tennant for the extra point that is up and good 33 yard touchdown reception by Jackson capping off a nine play drive. Jaden Jackson burns the guy deep after the three and out by the Kansas State defense and Kansas State is Jaden Jackson look at the number two receiver he pulls the safety out which allows Jackson to run right through the middle of the field by pulling the safety out of there with the second receiver who was Phillip Brooks it opens it wide open for Will Howard to deliver a touchdown strike. First touchdown catch for Jaden Jackson as a K-State Wildcat. Played in four games last year. Coming over from Ole Miss. And Robbins downing back deep into the end zone for another touchback. So Simo, their first possession, a three and out. 
Kansas State a nine play drive 67 yards that ate up just over four minutes culminating in that 33 yard touchdown pass to Jordan Wright Wright's first career touchdown. Devorier Vic comes in motion handoff and then has tripped up right in the backfield and he's going to lose a couple. You know this, this is a program Simo. They won the title in the Ohio Valley Conference last year. They, they, they've won it three times 2010 2019 and last year. Terrific head coach Tom Matukowicz who has ties to this area from Silver Lake Kansas about a 45 minute drive east of here and we'll get more into that story as we go on. But it's a program that bases their offense. They're going to run the football and they want to stop the run defensively. And here's the quarterback running Paxton DeLorean getting a block from Flournoy on the edge. There is a flag though down at the 30 before he stepped out of bounds just across the 30. You saw DeLaurent, the quarterback, keep it at that time, but it looked like the block on the edge. Holding. Holding. Offense. Offense. Number 80. Number 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Still second down. Silver Lake, Kansas. Kansas State fans are very familiar with the town of Silver Lake. It's a small town just east of here. Correction. That was on miles east of Manhattan. And look at a guy who was in the class of 92. Yeah, Tom Batukowicz. Coach Took, as he's better known as. Played at Silver Lake High School for outstanding head coach C.J. Hamilton. There was Coach Took. He said, I grew up idolizing the Kansas State program. And this is the first ever meeting between these two schools. Here's Hess trying to get outside, but he can't. He is tripped up by linebacker Austin Moore. They call him the machine. And he is just Mr. Production. Austin Moore, you see all over the field when you watch him on film. He's on the right side of the screen here, number 41. Watch him scrape off this block, extend it, get the running back to the ground. Austin Moore, the machine, as you said, Mark. He's an elite player for this Kansas State defense. Led K-State with 87 tackles last year, played it all 14 games. And a third down and long, third and 15 for the Red Hawks in their second possession. DeLorean. K-State rushes three. The pass toward the sideline and wide open is Flournoy for a first down and near the 45-yard line, stepping out of bounds there. So they complete it. And that is a completion of 29. That's a mishap. This Kansas State defense just can't have Ryan Flournoy, the best player on Simo's offense. You can't let him run free, especially in this 3-3-5 defense with three high safeties. That mistake just can't happen. Bring four this time. DeLaurent looking, rolling left, going to get a block from Hess. We'll try to get to the sideline and get a yard or so before he's out of bounds. You know, for DeLaurent, this is year two for him as the starting quarterback for SEMO. He is from Camdenton, Missouri, which is a town down on the Lake of the Ozarks. He played two seasons at Central Methodist University, which is in Fayette, Missouri. And played 10 games last year for them, missed the last two regular season games with a foot injury. And a big theme for this SEMO offense and it is keeping him healthy, right? With all the extending he does, he gets himself in trouble when he gets tackled. Finds Florida who breaks a tackle and he's pushed out right near the marker by Kobe Savage, number two, one of the seven captains for K-State this year. We'll see where they spot it. And they're going to spot him a little bit short by about a yard. But Flournoy, first team all Ohio Valley Conference. This is his second season with SEMO. Played a year at a junior college, Iowa Western, and also at Central Missouri. Is that going to be enough with the spot? It looks like it will be a Red Hawks first down. The benefit when you have a quarterback like Paxton DeLaurent, who's 6'5", 225 pounds, they're great in these quarterback sneak situations. Everyone on the field knows quarterback sneak is coming right there, and he's still able to get the first down. And they're in Kansas State territory at the Wildcat 46-yard line. And now just crossing the 50 again. This is a, sh a place that they like to take shots. You got Ryan Flournoy. They're bringing in motion. They like to get him the ball in these areas. 
There they get it to him. Flournoy getting some blocking up front by Demorie Vick, but he is upended by Will Lee. The cornerback came up and upended him. You'll see with Flournoy, they move him all over the field. They'll put him at running back. They'll put him in the slot. They'll put him at wide receiver. They like to get him the ball. Will Lee here is a big hitter at corner. Will Lee and his transfer from Iowa Western Community College in his first season. K State. Second down at four. DeLorean time to throw and out of the backfield a little too wide for Hess. Off the fingertips a late flag comes in as well. I think that's going to be a late hit. After the play was over personal foul illegal blindside block. Number 17 of the offense. 15-yard penalty. Third down. Kyron Downey, number 17, called for that late hit. Blindside block. See number 17 there come crack back on the defender. You just can't do that. Number one, the blindside block, possible block in the back. But you can't do it, especially after the whistle. Those are the kind of mistakes. If you're Simo, you're on the road, you're big underdog, you can't cross midfield and then have these 15 yard personal fouls it'll kill you and it'll, you'll never get momentum on offense and pushes it back on the other side of the 50 to their own 45 on a third and 18 now line to gain is the Wildcats 36. DeLorean throws across the middle and he finds Flournoy inside the 45 upended by Colby McAllister. Still going to leave them about nine yards short of the first down. But they're kind of in that gray area here, Adam, at the 40, just inside the 44 yard line. Yeah, fourth and eight is a little long to be comfortable going for it here, but you don't have a lot of options, right? It's a little bit too close to punt. You're, feel, you're way out of field goal range. But when you're on the road, again, underdogs, you take a risk like this because you've got to create some momentum and a spark for your team. With that three receiver bunch up top, and DeLorean looking that way, and Flournoy has it, but he's short of the first down by about a yard. Jacob Parrish with the tackle, and Simo's going to turn it over on downs. That is great coverage by Jacob Parrish. He's able to sit at the sticks and then drive on the football. Right the field. The sticks. Runner was down, short of the line of the game. First down, Kansas State. Media time at So Kansas State's going to get the ball for a second time. Will Howard with a 33-yard touchdown pass on the first possession of the game for the Wildcats. Kansas State will go as far as Will Howard takes them. Let's look at the film. Number one, holy arm talent. Not many people in college football can make this throw. Look how tight this window is. He squeezes it, squeezes it in there for a big touchdown and a big moment in the game. Great catch by Ben Sinnott. Number two, pocket awareness. Watch the pocket collapse. He rolls out to his left with his eyes downfield. Look at his eyes here. And then he resets his feet and delivers an absolute strike for a touchdown. That is a special throw by a great quarterback. Number, number three, he has to get better in these situations. He trusts his arm too much. It's not open, clearly zone coverage. The defender drives on the football, and it's an interception that just can't happen at the quarterback position. If he can clean those little things up, he can truly become one of the best in the Big 12 and in all of college football. On that first possession, Howard six of six through the air, 46 yards, and the 33-yard touchdown pass to Jaden Jackson. Here comes R.J. Garcia in motion. Howard gonna hand it off. Get up to the four. Ward tackled by Bryce Norman. See this Kansas City offense going fast here. They're on the line of scrimmage already about to run a play. Howard fires it out a little too high for Ben Sinnott. Those are the, the kind of things Will Howard has to get better at. I talked to him last night. He talked about getting better at pinpoint accuracy. Being accurate with the football, not just putting it on the receiver, but putting it at the right number on the upfield shoulder. That can be the difference between a 10 yard gain and a big explosive play. He's got to get more accurate with the football. It was the first incompletion of the game from Howard after hitting on his first six. Ward in the backfield, third down at seven for the Cats. Howard hit as he throws. And Jackson was still doing a downfield block, didn't see where it was, and this ball's picked off, taken away. Antonio Taylor. And he returns it inside the 50 to the 46 yard line of K State.
Will Howard just throws it up for grabs. Can't happen. And now Simo had got some momentum back. As he throws here, Howard, should he have delivered this ball at him? Well, we talked about too much trust. Ben Sinnott is not open there. There's a one high safety over top of him, double coverage. Despite getting hit, he still shouldn't have thrown that football. Those, those are the things he has to clean up. Howard had four picks last year. Two of those came in the Sugar Bowl loss to Alabama. There's obviously his first of this season as Delorean just gets rid of it out of bounds. You know, what you mentioned is, is something we also heard from Colin Klein, the offensive coordinator, uh, that, hey, the next step for Will is what you just said, learning when not to make the throw. Yeah, he has all the physical tools you could possibly want. I mean, when you could you could draw up an NFL quarterback, it looks like him. But it's the mental side of the game. Again, this is his first start ever today. It's Hess. Kobe Savage brings it down. His first start as the true starting quarterback, I guess we'll say, to begin this season, yes. Overall, his 16th total start. But again, He's the guy this year. There's no Adrian Martinez this season, et cetera. It's his first time opening the season as the starting quarterback. You know, and his career was up and down. It wasn't always pretty. But he has come out on the other side and is playing some really good football through the back half of the season, and now it needs to carry it on to this year. DeLoren on third and 11, pressured and sacked back at the 48 of the Red Hawks. Sayamalo and Moore bring it down. There's number 99, Uso Sayamalo, who's been battling a bit of an injury, but able to play today here on the opener. See in the middle, middle of your screen here, coming off the left side. He just State. gets some penetration. He's such a big force in the inside there. Where Troy was going to play, he's been banged up. But when he's in, he makes this defense much, much better. Uso started practicing again on Tuesday, and the coaches say, well, that's enough. He's going to get some reps today. And he helps out on the sack there. Third punt of the game. Dropped. Brooks able to recollect it at the 16. That almost turned badly quickly for K-State, but Phillip able to jump quickly back on it. K-State will have their worst starting field position so far of the game back at their own 16. You know, we talked about those defensive linemen that are getting this penetration. And that 3-3-5 defense, the defensive linemen aren't the most athletic. They're not edge rushers. They're just bull rushers. They need to get penetration, push the offensive linemen back. And the Kansas State D-line is doing a great job of that so far today. 33-yard touchdown catch from Howard to Jaden Jackson. The lone score so far here with just over two and a half minutes to play first quarter. Now we're going to give it to D.J. Giddens. Running left, turns up field, gets twisted around. By Eric Ivory, the free safety, up to make the hit and a minimal gain there. It'll be interesting to see how they use Trayshawn Ward and DJ Giddens throughout this game. Again, Giddens is more the downhill power back. Trayshawn Ward they can use all over the field, put him out in space. Again, it just one on first down. The motion, RJ Garcia. Rush off the edge. Howard looking across the middle and sent it all alone to midfield. Bumped down inside Red Hawk territory at the 43-yard line by Joe Edrick Lewis. And they left the tight end by himself for a big gainer. It's a great play design by Colin Klein. Two, two tight ends are together on the left side of the screen, and then they clear it out. He comes underneath for a big game. 40-yard pickup there. First down now. For the Wildcats, and on a first down run, a gain of three. See the two tight ends on the left. Will Swanson clears it out, number 83, and then Ben Sinnott comes right underneath. No one is around him, and the big boy bulldozes over a few defenders. Those are the kind of play designs when you have two tight ends that can play, manipulates personnel, and you get the open, the open middle of the field for the big tight end. Sinnott last year led the Big 12 tight ends in yards per catch, averaged about 14 and a half yards per grab. His first team all Big 12. A breakout season for him. Howard fires wide open. Brooks. Joe Edrick Lewis combines on the tackle with Lawrence Johnson. Another Wildcat first down inside the 30. 
12 yard gain up to the 28 of Simo. As we're inside the clock running the last half minute again. They don't stop the clock on first downs now until inside two minutes and a half. So a little something different for us to uh, pay attention to here in 2023. Lots of time Howard going towards the end zone in the corner. Did he make the catch? No incomplete. Johnson had the coverage on RJ Garcia not far from the pylon. Will Howard was just a second late throwing that football. Garcia had him beat to the corner. He's got to throw that thing just a split second earlier. There's probably a big completion. Completion stops the clock with 11 seconds to play in this initial stanza with a 7 0 K State lead. High snap, quick shovel, Giddens running right, trying to get a block on the edge there from Garcia. Little bit ability to turn the corner there to get it inside the 25 to the 24. Ruled a pass there on that little shovel, DJ. And they'll restart the clock, and that'll be the end of the first quarter. So the reigning Big 12 champs opening up the 2023 season here against the FCS foe Southeast Missouri State. Big play, that catch by Jaden Jackson, his first career touchdown, 33 yards from Howard for the only score of the first half. Tori Petri down on the field. Tori, uh, that offensive line for K-State, there's a lot of beef there, correct? Absolutely, and the beef is back. They are a phenomenon right now in Manhattan. These five guys returned for this year. After the Sugar Bowl, coach said that he gave guys hugs, thought they were going to the NFL, but turns out they had a meeting together and decided to come back and play again this season. It's a pretty big deal around here. It is a huge deal to bring that experience back. Here's DJ Giddens. To start the second quarter with a run, he's going to get within a yard of a first down before he's stopped by Lawrence Johnson and Stephen Lewis. You know, visiting yesterday with the head coach of the Wildcats, Chris Kleiman, we asked, actually kind of said, hey, it looks like the offensive line is the heart and soul of this team. And he didn't hesitate. He said, absolutely. It's one of the best offensive lines in college football with all the experience. And speaking of the beef here in a fourth and one situation, this is where you're going to see them come out and try to get some penetration. This is when the strength of your team has to play the very best. From the SEMO 19, Giddens is going to have that yard and more and a first down. Up to the 17. What experience they bring back. Cooper Beebe. Hadley Panzer, Hayden Gillum to center. Again, Christian Duffy's out today with a foot kind of ankle injury. Carver Willis getting the start at right tackle. But empty with two receivers up top. Quick throw. Howard a little behind Giddens, though. This is incomplete. Looking for number 31. It's a little close up. You look at the beef on that O line. That's some serious beef right there. 330, 335. I mean, those are some big boys. And a, a lot of these guys, <laughs> a handful of these guys will play in the NFL. Cooper Beebe will be a day one yeah. or two NFL draft pick. There is NFL talent on this offensive line. Howard with the shovel. This is Treshawn Ward turning it upfield. A little wiggle inside the five. Getting towards the end zone. Is he in? They are marking him short. He is short. He's not in. About a half yard shy. So they quickly get back to the line of scrimmage on what is now a first and goal. Give it right back to Ward, and he's trying to get in, but can't once again. There's the whistle, and the Seymour defense stands him up, and it'll be second and goal. Let's see if he gets in here. Going to see his left elbow get down, and the ball is not yet across the white line. Again, any part of the ball has to cross the white line there before he's down. Does not look like it does came up short heavy package here trying to force it in by pushing Howard from behind 
The SEMO defense again keeps Kansas State out of the end zone. This is an area they were not very good in last year, Kansas State. Touchdowns in the red zone. You can't settle for field goals in the red zone. you got to punch it in. And now they'll get a couple more shots at it. There's no way this thing's getting kicked. I guarantee you that. There's two downs to get this thing in the end zone. Well, so close to Ward getting it in the end zone. He was about the length of the football short, and there's still about two lengths of the football short. Really on the field of the runner not scoring a touchdown. It's under further review. So now we're going to review the last play to see if Howard got in the end zone with the push. And we saw that with the Eagles a lot last year. Remember how many times Jalen Hurts, if you're watching the Super Bowl, you saw it when, when it was third or fourth and short, they just line up some big bodies behind him and push him forward. That's what K-State did there. there. There used to be a rule where you couldn't do that. No. You weren't able to push the quarterback. They changed that rule. Now everyone in college football does it. Everyone in the league, they just push on the back end there. Everyone's just pushing Will Howard in. Let's see if we can get an angle to see. I mean, there's so many bodies in there. Again, they would have to have indisputable video evidence to say that he crossed the white line. I remember many years ago when Matt Leinart I think pushed Reggie Bush into the end zone at a time when it was illegal to do mm -hmm. that. Yep. And it didn't get caught. But now it's perfectly legal. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Third down. All right. Back where we started, the Wildcat fans getting a little bit restless here. They, they were already cheering, thinking that Trayshawn Ward had a touchdown run. And now here they are with third and the length of the football again from the end zone. On the sideline right there, I guarantee you, Will Howard is saying to his offensive linemen, we have to be able to punch this thing in. It's an <laughs> inch to goal. We're the best offensive line of the Big 12. 13th play of the drive. Let's see if the beef up front gives him some room. And then Will Howard with a little bit of trickery, misdirection, takes it into the end zone himself for the rushing touchdown. Will Howard had three rushing touchdowns last year. Picks up number one here to make it 13-0. McCall Will Howard, sneaky athletic. Being able to pull that and hit the edge. Not the fastest guy in the world, but he can run with the football when you need him to. Chris Tennant. Out of the hole to Bloomer. 14-0. You see the fake here. Everyone crashes down. Every part of the defense thought it was going inside. Will Howard pulls it. Kansas State is off to a hot start. What a hot day in Manhattan. Some strike to Jaden Jackson. Will Howard delivers a strike down the field. Then he comes back, slows down a little bit with a bad interception, gets hit, ball flies up in the air. And then right after, gets the momentum back, uses the wheels. Big boy can run, and Will Howard is feeling himself now. 14-0. So three drives for Kansas State, two touchdowns. Tennant's kick is going to go to the end zone for a touchback. Will Howard tonight, that first drive, perfect six of six through the air. It was a 33-yard touchdown strike for Jaden Jackson. And then the pick and then the rushing touchdown when they got it in on third down and fooled everybody with a little misdirection. Now for Simo, th this is a big drive right here. 14 nothing. Again, you're on the road, a tough environment. You got to get some momentum going on offense, or this game can get away from you really quickly. Got to get a first down, and then maybe go fast. Keep some momentum on your side. Simo just one rushing yard so far. They averaged 226 rushing yards a game at the FCS level last year. There's a pass to Hess out of the backfield, and Gino. Race it across the 30. Yeah, they'll mark him right out at about the 30 for a gate of five with Keenan Garber, the cornerback, coming up to push him out. So much of this momentum for Simo is just getting positive yardage on first down. Puts you in a great spot. Right now is a play calling. Right for Jeremy McDowell, offensive coordinator for Simo. Being in a second and four situation leaves so many things avail available to you. DeLorean, quick pass, finds Vic. DeMarie Vic breaks one tackle. A second tackle has a first down. Across the 40, out of bounds at the 43-yard line. DeMaurier Vic 
wore number 16 last year, now wearing number three in year number two for him with Simo. The guy who played 36 games at Missouri State. The Missouri Valley Conference. Laurent rolling out. Time running out and just throw it out of bounds. Daniel Green was the one in pursuit of the Simo quarterback. Those are the kind of things Paxton DeLorean has to get better at. He had DeMore Vic wide open in the flat right there. Could have thrown him the football for a five, six yard gain, been in a second and short situation. Instead, he's looking down the field for a shot. It's not there, and he throws the ball out of bounds. When you, when you have the easy throw and completion, sometimes you just have to take it. Long look to the sideline here. Play clock still at 10. And Joyner in is the tight end. Two receivers up top. They're going to go in that direction. It's Vic who has the catch. Wrapped up there. Keenan Garber got enough of him to keep him from breaking away. He's out of bounds at the 48. Bring up a third down at about five. third down and five situation I know who they're looking at is number one Ryan Fornoy in the slot the second receiver in from the bottom of the screen put in motion Dorian Anderson rolling out that's knocked away intended for Hess and Nate Matlack the defensive end got his big mitts on that Matlack who played all 14 games last year but was pretty much banged up the entire season number 15 Fe feeling about as healthy as he has now in a couple of years Matlack reads that thing the entire way. They faked the pitch. Matlack did not get fooled, saw it come, and stayed home at defensive end. That's the important part. Not leaving your home. You got to be there to, to protect the edge. Does a great job there and knocks the ball down. Junior Adam Heston on to punt. Phillips Brook, Phillip Brooks back at his own 12. Spiraling punt. Fair catch called for Brooks at the 12. Made in the Chris Kleiman, head coach of the Wildcats in season number five. Been to the postseason three of the four years he has been the head coach. Great tenure at North Dakota State. Was a part of a four FCS titles as the head coach. Three more when you include his time as an assistant. And of course, the Big 12 championship last year, beating TCU in the Big 12 title game. He, uh, when you look at the hire and, and you know when you follow a legend when the guy's the name is on the stadium you got to pick the right guy and they did with Chris Kleiman. Trey Sean Ward on first down for just a yard or so. It's a Kansas State program that won their third Big 12 title last year which was season four for Kleiman as the head coach. Howard fires and finds the open tight end. That's been Senate first down all the way up near the 30. Senate does a great job seeing the zone coverage, hitching his route. He reminds me a lot of George Kittle. Similar build, similar play styles. They can be, all, be used all over the field. And he just has a knack of getting open. Not the fastest guy in the world, but feels leverage and defenses really well. With guys like Kittle and Travis Kelsey, has the tight end position at the NFL been reinvented a bit over the last five years? It used or six to not years? be cool to be a tight end. And then yeah. all of a sudden, everyone grows up wanting to be a tight end now. Was it cool when you were a tight end? Not, not as much. Not as much. Open. Phillip Brooks. He's up near midfield. Zykeef Johnson, the tackle at the 49 of K State. What a 21 yard pickup there for Phillip Brooks. Kansas State going fast. Howard, Senate. Right near the sticks again. He'll be about a yard short after a gain of nine. Yeah, Ben Senate. No, no question. What a breakout season for him a year ago. He made so many big plays down the stretch in important moments. First charge, time out. Catching the ball in traffic. Simo's going to use their first timeout. So we'll step aside as well with just Media under nine out. minutes to play. First half for Manhattan, 14-0.
Ben Sinnott has been on the field for all 31 offensive snaps for K-State. We told you at the top he's going to line up a lot of different places, Adam, and he has uh, done just that. Ten at tight end, 19 out wide at wide receiver, two at H back in the backfield. True Swiss Army knife. They'll use him all over. And what he does to a defense, they don't know where he's going to be, where he's going to line up, what he's going to do. Is he blocking? Is he running around? They use him everywhere. He's having a day today, and Mark, I'm here for it, man. I love it. Love to see the tight ends do their thing, don't you? Oh, I love it, man. Second down and two and a first down run for DJ Giddens. The 37 of Simo. Yeah, last year it was Deuce Vaughn. And DJ Giddens got some carries, but there was no question who the guy carrying the mail was. It was Deuce Vaughn. Now you got Ward, the transfer from Florida State, and DJ. And it's kind of 1A, 1B, whatever you want to say. These two guys are going to be sharing a lot of carries. It would appear here in 2023. Howard wanting to throw and under some pressure finds a man wide open and that's R.J. Garcia racing for the pylon. Touchdown. Will Howard had a 33 yard touchdown throw earlier to Jaden Jackson in the first quarter a 37 yard touchdown this time for Garcia who coach Kleiman has said this guy's gone to the next level in fall camp great play action there when you're able to run the football it opens all this stuff up RJ Garcia starts on the right runs all the way across the field in a deep crossing route outruns the safeties and Will Howard puts the ball on a dime Tend it on for the extra point to make it 21 nothing. We asked Coach Kleiman yesterday by Garcia said hey RJ last year learned a lot from Kate Warner but he has kicked it up several notches in fall camp and he has a touchdown reception his second career TD catch the other was a 25 yard touchdown catch in the Big 12 championship game against TCU that was a huge play for them. Yeah he really gained confidence in that Big 12 championship game. We talked talk, talk to the coaches they said it feels like he's played a ton of football but he really hasn't. He's a pretty new player but has been one of the most impressive players from a confidence and improvement standpoint during training camp. Second touchdown throw today for Will Howard. See Howard just going through his progressions there starting on the right coming all the way back to the left. He knows he's throwing to RJ Garcia that entire time but is looking off the high safety. Great job manipulating the defense. And this Kansas State offense is fun to watch. Colin Klein down dialing the plays up and letting his quarterback air it out. Six play drive 87 yards. And two minutes 16 seconds. Taking off the clock. Kansas State really six big explosive plays so far in this game including a couple of touchdown throws for Howard. Going to bring it out of the end zone this time. Kyron Downing. Redshirt freshman from Benita Oklahoma is going to be stopped short of the 20. That's Asa Newsom. True freshman there making the stop on special teams there on the right. The visor on. That's Colin Klein, ninth overall season. Won the 2012 Johnny Unitas Award, which is for top quarterback academically and off the field as well as on the field. Max Duggan won that award, by the way, last year for TCU. He had a great playing career of his own here at K-State in the Ring of Honor. Hess sandwiched down there by Uso Sayamalu. And Uso Sayamalu is an explosive player inside. He ripped through a double team there, comes out of nowhere for the big stop. It's a big boy who does some athletic things in the middle of this defense. So Gino Hess, who ran for almost 1,700 yards last year, has been a non-factor in this game so far. Just one rushing yard. And Lawrence throws that away under pressure. This actually has five carries for minus three yards. And this is a SEMO team. We've said it. Their identity offensively is running the football. 
and defensively is stopping the run. Man, when you can't run the football on offense, it just makes it so tough on your quarterback. Paxton DeLorean has no play action ability when you can't run the ball. The defense knows what's coming, makes it tough on the QB. Here comes the blitz. He's being chased. DeLorean fires behind the intended receiver. It was Mitchell Sellers, the tight end. But there were several purple jerseys right on the heels of DeLorean who was getting some serious heat, including some from Jordan for Wright. State is wearing number 28. 15 is now wearing number 28. Heston inside his own five to punt. Brooks back at his 35 of K-State. You know, Mark, this Kansas State defense it causes so much confusion for quarterbacks. They run this 3-3-5 system, as we've talked about. Five safeties deep. Quarterbacks don't know where they're lining up. They can't identify it. It makes it really tough. Clifton really came after that punt. They got it away. Taken there around the 40 by Brooks. And that's where K-State is going to start when we come back to Manhattan with the Wildcats up by three touchdowns. State is up 21 21 and why is Cooper Beebe and the beef this guy is a projected first round draft pick in the NFL draft this year his parents Tom and Tamara actually encouraged him to go for the NFL money after last season but there were a few big reasons why he decided he wanted to come back one was the he wanted to keep his commitment to finishing his degree and number two his younger brother Camden is a true freshman he wanted to be able to show him the ropes and number three the toughest to argue with he wanted to be the first offensive lineman in K-State's ring of honor he could join his offensive coordinator there Mark. There's a good look at the family there. His brother Camden is there on, on the right uh, with his arm around his dad. Uh, great shot. How many times is it the athlete that's the one that's saying, no, I don't need the money, mom and dad, right now. I'm, I'm going to go back and play at K-State. Because he could right now be getting ready to play in his first NFL game next week. It's not often. And he would have been a day one or two pick this past year. Shocked the whole, all the coaches. We talked to them yesterday. They said they were absolutely shocked when they heard he was coming back. <laughs> RJ Garcia brings down another reception. His third catch of the game. Good look at Cooper, who's from the Kansas City, Kansas side, Piper High School, which is on the far west side of the Kansas metro area. Lots of time. Howard now being pursued and throws. Sin and made an adjustment, makes the catch, and has wrestled down inside the 15, lost the ball. It's picked up by Garcia, and he's down inside the five. Well, Sinnott shaking his head. He had a nice catch and run, and then lost it, fumbled it forward, and Garcia almost took it into the end zone. Booker knocked it out. Keandre Booker. Scramble drill here. Ben Sinnott goes up the sideline after the broken play. Ball pops out, and R.J. Garcia heads up play, running to the football, just being around the ball. Jumps right on it and advances it. Joe Edrick Lewis, he's the fist. He might have also created that to come out. Ward trying to get in again. This time he will not be denied. Trayshawn Ward has his first touchdown as a K-State Wildcat. He had a career-high seven touchdowns last season for Florida State. Inside zone play. He's able to use his vision to bounce this thing to the right. Lowers the shoulder and piles in there again. This is a guy, Trayshawn Ward, Big 12, fresh, Big 12 newcomer of the year in the preseason. A lot of excitement. They need to keep getting him touches. And this offense with D.J. Giddens, Trayshawn Ward, R.J. Garcia, a lot of playmakers that can make some noise in the Big 12 Conference. Three-yard touchdown run for Trayshawn Ward. I think they were giving it a quick look just to make sure he was in before the elbow went down. And confirm that. Tenet for the point after. Out of the hole to Jack Bloomer. Twenty eight nothing K State quick there four plays 60 yards a minute 42 for their fourth touchdown of the game and the first for Trayshawn Ward. Introducing the new and improved taste of Pepsi Zero Sugar. Now more delicious. 
Zero never tasted so good. Try it now. Morning. Hi. Nice day for a walk. Let's get in some steps later. I'd love to. But I have to stay home for my tune-up. My convenience window is 10 to 7. I scheduled ours with Kate's because I could choose the exact time. No more waiting around? Yep. Just go online and book the time that works best for you. Book your tune-up online at katesheatingandcooling.com. Because who can keep your home feeling homey year-round? That's right. Kate's care! You're getting thirsty. Bold. Refreshing. So good. <clears throat> I mean, do. Um, you know with the new Rivalry Riches instant ticket from the Kansas Lottery, you're supposed to scratch both sides. Well, suit yourselves. But with Rivalry Riches, you could scratch your way up to $50,000. Just be sure to play both sides. Check it, check it, check it, check it out. Introducing the new and improved taste of Pepsi Zero Sugar. Now more delicious. Zero never tasted so good. Try it now. You're getting thirsty. Bold. Refreshing. So good. <clears throat> I mean, do the do. We started at 12, winning 11 deep. And dropping down since 9-6. What happened when the Big A met the Southwest? Seven Heismans, count them. With six at the net, five on the floor, and four schools stronger. We put up threes, throw up deuces, and make one thing clear. We've always been greater than 12. Take a look at this big time throw from Howard to Senate. Howard has great pocket awareness here, sees the pressure, steps to the right, and delivers a strike down to Ben Sinnott, and then the fumble for the big explosive play. Sometimes the ball just bounces in your favor, and it certainly happened for Kansas State tonight. So for number 34, Ben Sinnott, he has five catches already. He's been targeted seven times. Five catches for a career-high 100 yards on the nose right now. 89 was his previous career high that big breakout game he had at Baylor last year he had seven catches for 89 yards had a couple of touchdowns in that game but he has a career high for receiving yards we take a look at our game summary number one if you're a SEMO fan you're looking at two things oh, well no that stick out for me one rushing yard only three total first downs. Yeah, one rushing yard you're not going to win any game you play anywhere against anyone if you run the ball for one yard. It just puts your quarterback in such a tough situation. There's no rhythm on offense right now. And really, the main point is how good this Kansas State defense is. There are some question marks at, at, at safety and at corner, and they've answered them so far. It has out of the backfield. And on first down, he'll gain about six. Asa Newsom, there's the true freshman. Waverly, Iowa, number 23, who's in the game. And one of the true freshmen they're extremely high on on that defense. You talk about a linebacker and what you want one to look like. It's Asa Newsom. 6'3, 217, long arms, rangy, can run. He's going to be a great player for them. This time, DeMaurier Vic, first down. Maybe close to midfield. That's to the 47, 48 yard line of Simo before he's tackled by VJ Payne. So the fourth first down of the game. For the Red Hawks, We're trying to get something going here with under five minutes to play in the first half. The cool thing with this SEMO offense is they read everything at the quarterback position. Every single thing he's doing, he has an option to run the football. Here comes Green on the blitz, among others, and you had an ankle wrapped up there by Desmond Purnell. He's able to get the throw away and get it out of bounds. Purnell's another guy who the coach has talked about of really stepping up and coming into his own. He's a converted defensive back, moved down to play linebacker, had a great training camp. He, and they want to see him play fast like he did right there. Fired out to Vic. 
down the sideline. He'll have a first down. Pushed out of bounds once again by Payne at the 40 yard line of K State. And a lot of the attention may go to Flournoy, but Morier Vic, outstanding receiver in his own right for SEMO. This time they're going to line up the tight end, Danny Joyner, at the bottom of your screen. He's part of three receivers on that side. DeLaurent being pressured again, and he is sacked back at the 46 yard line. Khalid Duke. They are looking for a monster year at one of those defensive end positions for the senior from Atlanta. Here's Khalid Duke, the defensive end, left side of the screen, coming off with a spin move. That's a big athletic guy doing some athletic moves inside. He converted from linebacker to defensive end. His true natural spot is the end, and they believe he can be one of the best D linemen to come through Kansas State in the last 10 years. He's an impressive player. And they're going to need him to make plays like that all through conference play. Three sacks last year, gets a sack there, a loss of 13. Now pushed back in their own end. Yes, trying to get away, and then a flag comes flying. Austin Moore, the one who wrapped him up, he may have a hold here against Simo. It's going to be a hold on number 19, Danny Joyner, the tight end, I believe. Anytime the ball bounces to the outside when it's not supposed to go there, makes it likely and common for holding penalties to happen. Holding. Offense. Number 19. Penalties decline. Third down. That's on the tight end, Joyner, who's the starting tight end now. They lost their starter last year, Will Weidman, a good player. Lost Johnny King, who led them in receptions with 69. Lost three starters on the offensive line. So quite a few new pieces for Coach Tuke to assimilate for Simo on that offensive side of the ball. Timeout this time called by Kansas State. They use their first. First charge, timeout of the half. K-State, 30-second timeout. Southeast Missouri State opening the season here. They will open up their home schedule next week against Lindenwood, and they get to play at Hout Field, which has been around a long time, opened in 1930, but several phases of renovations underway. Phase one, they have a brand new turf. Their soccer team opened it up a couple weeks ago with a win, and they also worked on the South Grandstand. They've changed that. That's phase one that has been complete. There are more phases to follow. It's just part of the program of SEMO. Again, a program that's won three Ohio Valley Conference titles. And what Coach Tuke has done in his 10 years has been fantastic. We talked about Kansas State building a culture of winning. Really, Coach Tuke at SEMO has built a great culture of knowing how to win football games, consistently putting great teams on the field. Red Ox 2 of 7 on third down, third and 24, handed off to Hess. And he is stacked up for just a gain of two at the 48. Well, they got the ball into K-State territory, then a costly penalty pushed him back. And K-State slams the door there. Let's see. With the clock running and under three minutes to go. 15 for Kansas State. He's now wearing number 28. 15, he's wearing 28. Back into return for the gas. Another punt here for Adam Heston He's in his first year with SEMO. Just got it away, and Brooks fair catch at the 11. So we'll see how aggressive K State wants to get, starting from their own 11 with. Two timeouts and 2.14 to play, 28 nothing lead. Colin Klein has to be happy with what he's seen from Will Howard so far today. Despite the one interception where he threw the ball up for grabs after the hit, 14 of 18, 229 yards. And he's made some great throws, showing the arm talent that we talked about, the pocket awareness, all the things you want in a quarterback. 
Brooks in motion. Fakes the handoff to Giddens. The throw is possibly deflected. It was well behind Jaden Jackson. Looked like that ball got tipped at the line of scrimmage. Another play action pass where they're allowing, you know, Will Howard, his numbers were best last year on play action. When he's able to set his feet in the pocket, linebackers and safeties come up is when he's at his very best. We'll see if they come back to it. Going to give it to DJ Giddens this time, running left and turns the corner with a block, and he's down the sideline. A foot race, Giddens. They get him by the shirt tail and drag him down inside the SEMO 40. They'll mark him down inside the 35 yard line. Look at number 55, Hayden Gillum, the big center, leading the way. He's the one that makes that thing happen. There aren't many centers that can run like that. And then DJ Giddens puts on the burners. Who said he's a power back? I mean, he, he showed some speed there. Everyone we talked to, and when you hear people say his really name, it's always field. he's downhill. Well, the first he's a down power is under further review to see if the runner stepped out of bounds. Well, for now, it's a 43-yard gain, but they're going to take a look as he was going down that far sideline just to make sure that he didn't step out of bounds prior to being tackled out of bounds. I just mentioned it there on the Hayden Gillum center pulling. There aren't many centers in college football that pull out to the edge like that and are blocking defensive backs down the field. Again, it shows how athletic this offensive line is. They're able to do things like that, which then gets your back out on the edge. Watching the feet here. He hasn't stepped out yet. Ah, I think he might have right there. Tough to tell, but this may. He's definitely out at that point. But did he step out at about, what, 10 or 12 yards prior to that? Yeah, it looked like he did. So this one, I think, will be coming back. Still an explosive play for this Kansas State offense. Which there have been eight of those <laughs> so far today. There's no metric on offense that dictates success as well as explosive plays. It's so hard to put a long drive together with just running the football, little dink and dunk passes, but you need explosive plays to open up the game, to open up the offense. And Kansas State's had no shortage of those. You know, I guess there's a possibility the heel could be up there. It's really hard to tell from that angle to definitively say, yes, he stepped out of bounds. DJ had a career high 49 yard run last year at West Virginia as part of a career high 78 yard rushing game. The more you look at that Mark it is tough to see it. I think his toes on the ground but can't tell if his heel was hitting it. In the white. And it has to be definitive to overturn the call on the field which was that he was not ruled out at that point. DJ Giddens, who's from nearby Junction City, Kansas, played in all 14 games last year. Of course, behind Deuce Vaughn. Let's see what they come up with here. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Yep. First down. Kansas. I think they addressed the Kansas same State. issue we just talked about. Yeah, was he out of bounds? Maybe, but perhaps the heel was up at that spot. So we'll go as a 43 yard gain. Well, K State has 229 passing yards. 165 of those have come on those chunk plays, those explosive plays. Give it back to Giddens. This time he's greeted by big number 91. That is William Holmes. That's 6'2", 300 pounds. We've been talking a lot about Ben Sinnott as a receiver, but right there, and in a lot of these run plays, he's lead blocking. They put him off the ball, have him lead up the middle of the defense. This time he runs a route. Go underneath to Phillip Brooks. He has the first down at the 32 yard line of SEMO. Clock will stop now since we're under two minutes left in the half to move the chains and restart as they are set. 
12 yard gain. Plenty of time. Howard now being flushed out by Walton. And throws it away. Well, wait. Leonard. It is complete to Garcia, pushed out by Ty Leonard at the 21 yard line. That was a ridiculous catch. Tapping the toe down in traffic. Wow. He's had a day today. There he is extending the arms. Great hands catch. Pulls it in. Can't see his feet there. Wow. Wow is right. The ruling on the field. Yeah. A completed pass <laughs> is under further review. I thought once we took a look at it that perhaps they would as well in the replay booth. I mean, if he's able to get his feet down here, this is a ridiculously athletic play. Let's see him stretch out here. Again, he needs to have possession, which I think he has right there. Left foot, left, left toe foot. drag. Let's see, is it dragging there? It looks like it is. And again, the call on the field is a catch. Yep. We have the catch. I think I see some of the black yep. uh, rubber coming up from the, but this turf, by the way, is brand new. This is the first time they played on this. They replaced their artificial turf in the offseason. Now the question is, when does he get possession of the football? When does he catch that ball? And then does he control it through the ground, which he will have to do? See if the call is upheld or if it's overturned. Regardless, you got a glimpse right there of the athleticism and the freakishness of R.J. Garcia and what he brings to that wideout position. Yeah, he's really come into his own. Just again, the, the body control it takes to reach out Catch that ball with the mental awareness to drag the foot. He's making special plays all over the field. The coaches told us he was going to have a big year. I mean, they, they were talking about him a ton. We were asking about some other guys. They kept saying, R.J. Garcia, R.J. Garcia. And you see him talking to his head coach. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Completed catch. First is. Not only does it stand, it is confirmed. So spectacular catch by RJ Garcia. And it'll be first down for K-State at the 21 to SEMO. The minute 16 to go in the first half. Give us the DJ Giddens with a block from Sinnott, a spin move inside the 15. He gets down near the 12 yard line. The yard short of another first down. Clock continues to tick with just over a minute to go. Howard to the end zone, broken up at the last moment by Joe Edrick Lewis, intended for Seth Porter. And we're happy to see Seth Porter healthy and playing here today. They didn't know earlier in the week if uh, Porter, Seth Porter, one of their seven team captains, was going to get a chance to play today. It's a risky throw by Will Howard there. In the red zone right here is when you absolutely can't turn the football over. No matter what, you have a guaranteed three points. You can't throw an interception. That throw was a tough winner to throw it in to begin with, and then was a little bit behind. Got to clean that up. Porter goes in motion. The give is to DJ Giddens straight ahead. And he powers his way to a first down to about the nine yard line. Clock will stop to move the chains. K State does have two timeouts remaining if they want to use one Second here. And they will out of the half. do just K -State. that. 30 seconds. Five yards on the play. Good for a wild cat. Will Howard having a day so far, 252 Howard, yards belly, passing, a big chunk. Game on this touchdown to Jaden Jackson. I mean, he has made some impressive throws. Not this one, though. Gets hit, throws it up in the air. Those are the kind of things that have to get cleaned up. Uses the wheels to get on the edge. Shows I'm not just a passer, I can run the football, too. Uses great pocket awareness here, rolling out to his right. 
with a strike to Sinnott, who then coughs it up. RJ Garcia with a heads up play to jump on it. Then another great throw to RJ Garcia, who's having a day today. This Kansas State offense is clicking on all cylinders. Howard 16 to 22, 252 yards, the two TDs, the one pick. First and goal, K-State. Pull the guard, now they're gonna throw it back. From Ward to Howard, and Will Howard sneaks inside the pylon for the touchdown. Went to the gadget bag there. And Will Howard not only has a touchdown throw, but now a touchdown catch. Or is that a lateral? Let's see. Chayshon Ward throws it back to Will Howard. Everyone thinks the ball is going to the right. Will Howard said, you know, a passing touchdown, not enough. Rushing touchdown, not enough. I want to catch one, too. Yeah, he looks like he'd be a good tight end. This is the fun part of playing in the Colin Klein offense, the gadget plays, the trickery. When you have a former quarterback calling plays, they always love to do things like that. Get your guy, Will Howard, a touchdown catch in the football. Right down the middle for Chris Tennant. Who is five for five in point average, 35 nothing. Watch the whole defense flow to the right when Trayshawn Ward gets that football. Good throw by Trayshawn. Will Howard does the rest of the work. That's the kind of play you rep in practice, trying to find the guy that can throw the football. Great job by Trayshawn Ward there, selling it, stepping back, and delivering it to Will Howard. It is being ruled as a touchdown pass. I was curious if it was backwards and a lateral, but they're saying it's a touchdown pass, so a touchdown catch for Howard. I can do it all, man. Nine plays, 89 yards, a minute 36 on that scoring drive. K-State started back at their own 11. When I watch the Colin Klein offense and watch it on film, the, the thing that sticks out to me is that it's really simplistic with the illusion of complexity. It's a simple offense. They're doing a lot of the same things. They're running the hitch routes. They're running the same run schemes. But to the public and to the defense, it looks complex. And that's really what you want your offense to be, because you want it to be simple enough for your best players to go out and play fast. And we've seen their best guys play fast tonight. Going to bring it out. Kyron Downing on the near side, 15. Won't get to the 20. By the way, first touchdown reception of his career for Will Howard and his first career reception. Porter there on special teams that time. And Simo has only 30 seconds to work with. Two timeouts and start at their own 19, down 35 nothing. Southeast Missouri State has not been shut out in the last 41 games. So if indeed the score stays the same here, we go into the second half. See how it plays out. Quick strike, Flournoy. Six catch of the first half for Flournoy. On the tackle number eight, Will Lee. Second and six. After a gain of four, DeLorent now 12 of 20, 113 passing yards. Looking, now going to throw it towards Flournoy. Get a first down. He is stacked up there by Daniel Green and others on that K-State defense. Clock stops to move the chains with 18 seconds left. On attack number two, Cody Savage and number eight will be. Simo does not seem inclined at all to use one of those remaining two timeouts and may decide just to let it run down here. That's going to be the case. So 395 total yards in the first half for K State, 113 total yards for Simo. Simo minus 12 rushing yards. Brennan and I'm Mark Neely. What uh, stuck out for you first half that went well for K-State? The question was, who are the playmakers going to be on offense replacing Deuce Vaughn? We saw Trayshawn Ward make some huge plays. DJ Giddens with a long run. RJ Garcia stepped up and then the tight end, Ben Sinnott, having a career day today. Let's take a look at the first half highlights in K-State right out of the shoot. Their very first possession, uh, Will Howard 
Will Howard's having a day. He's feeling himself. Other than the one interception, he has looked almost perfect out there. He's seeing the field well. This one, he got hit. Ball flew up in the air. Got to get rid of those kind of turnovers. But other than that, he's looked really, really good. Has a rushing touchdown. Has been doing it every different kind of way. You see him deliver a strike to R.J. Garcia, who's having a big day. Colin Klein feels good. This offense is absolutely rolling. And then he decided to also catch a touchdown pass today. Will Howard doing it through the air, on the ground, and catching the football. So the first half stats again for SEMO, a team that really their bread and butter is running the football. They finished with minus 12 rushing yards in half number one. And six first downs. Uh, Torrey had coached two for SEMO just a few moments ago. K-State beats us. I'm not okay if SEMO beats us. What was your message to this team at halftime? You know, unfortunately, uh, we, we're kind of beating ourselves a little bit. Of course, they're talented, but uh, defensively, we said we got to make them earn it, and they've gotten some big plays. Offensively, a couple of penalties, a big sack that stopped those drives. But we're plus one on a takeaway, and that's pretty good against a team like this. What's something that you liked about what you saw from your team in the first half? I love the turnover uh, ratio that we're up one there. I love that it didn't look any different. You know, when they got up, the effort stayed the same. So uh, lots of lots there. We just got to keep coaching. Appreciate it, Coach. Thank you. Tori, thank you. And uh, Coach Took, his team is the preseason favorite to win the Ohio Valley Conference, which is also, it, it's the OVC and the Big South in an association for the next four years. K-State, who won the toss and deferred in the first half, gets the ball to start the second half. And Phillip Brooks elects to take it from a yard or two deep in the end zone across the 30 and hit there at the 33-yard. Let's take a look at the first half for Will Hired, who, as you mentioned, had a touchdown passes, touchdown reception, and a rushing touchdown. The 16-22 is what you wanted to see. Yeah. The, the completion percentage, getting the ball out quickly, Talking to Will yesterday, he kept talking about the accuracy that he needs to get better at throwing the football. And the difference between somewhat accurate and really accurate is, is a big jump in an offense, and it can affect the offense a ton. He's been very accurate today, which I think is what Colin Klein wanted to see going into today. And you saw just the seventh time in conference history that a player has had all those, the trifecta rushing. Touchdown, catch, and throw, and a nice spin move. Up near midfield goes D.J. Giddens, who has a career high for rushing yards in a game. 14-yard gain here. Great job with the spin move there. You see him keeping the ball high and tight when he's doing that for the ball security. The ball is the program, can't put it on the ground, and your running backs having good ball security says a lot about the coaching this program has. Right back to Giddens. Turns the corner, a first down, down on the sideline, but stepped out of bounds. We'll see where they actually they mark him out before he got to the first down marker, about three yards short of that at the 46 yard line of Simo. And there is a player down for the Red Hawks. While they attend to the SEMO player, will step aside. Lots of movement in college football, realignment. The Big 12, no exception. Let's look at the Big 12 last year with 10 teams. And now we have 14. You got BYU that's been added along with UCF, Cincinnati. As well as Houston. And next year, we had four teams from the Pac 12. Colorado got a big win today. Utah, Arizona, Arizona State. A lot of things going on. By the way, William Holmes, number 91, was the injured player for SEMO. He did go off the field under his own power. That was good to see. And here's a run, DJ Giddens. Pulled down at the 26 yard line. And we see him, Caro. Now they are attending to Williams, uh, to Holmes, I should say, the William Holmes. Senior defensive tackle. 19-yard gain there by D.J. Giddens. And on first down, Howard looking to throw. Now he's in some trouble, but escapes for the moment, looking. 
And a flag came out right as that throw from Howard. He threw away, but let's see about the flag. I think we'll get a holding penalty here. Holding. Offense. Number 77. Ten yard penalty. Still first down. It's not Carver Willis. He's getting the start at right tackle for the injured Christian Duffy. And on the right side of your screen here, you see him grab inside. Now when the quarterback scrambles, you see that right arm there, he hangs on about a second too late. Anytime the ball goes outside of you as a tackle or as a tight end, you got to feel it and let go right away, or they'll throw that holding flag every single time. So it'll be first down and 20 after the holding penalty. Sean Ward. Dumped after about a four yard gain. And let me ask you this if you're Simo down 35 nothing early second half, what do you think the message was? What's the tone going over on the far sideline? Yeah, this is a game you go into. No one's expecting you to win it. No one's expecting you to even play it close. This second half is about pride and seeing what kind of program you are. You can tell a lot about a football team by how they play in moments like this. When you're down by 35 points, how do you react? Do you still run to the football? Are your guys still playing hard? Are they running down on special teams still? That's what Tom Matukowicz wants to see out of his guys and just don't quit. Keep playing together. Well, it's a Southeast Missouri State team that went to the FCS playoffs last year. Went to Montana. Had a 24 to 3 lead in the third quarter. Lost though in that game that ended their season. Their quarterback DeLaurent who had missed the last two regular season games came back and played with the injury to his foot and ankle. An injury that actually lasted through spring ball for him. Here's a throw towards the end zone. Well, the intended receiver there was Brooks, but there were a lot of white shirts, including number 29, Antonio Taylor, who got a hand on that in the end zone. And he had Brooks open in the middle of the field. It was a good play design. Just missed him on the throw there. That's one Will Howard wants to have back. Would have been a touchdown if he completed it. So here's Chris Tennant. It's a 51 yard attempt which would tie his career high. It came at Texas in 2021. His longest field goal attempt last year was 44 yards. Off the right hash. It has the distance. And good. Well one of the stories has been Chris Tennant here in fall camp and Chris Kleiman said he feels more relaxed. And that Tennant seems more confident. And he banks through a 51 yard field goal which ties a career high for him. This was a big moment for Chris Tennant didn't have a great year last year. But to bang a field goal this long massive for the confidence in now Kansas State 51 yard field goal equaling a career high has made it 38 nothing that, that looked like it could have gone from 56 57 yards for Tennant whose longest made field goal last year was 37 yards against Mizzou his longest field goal attempt year ago was 44 so that is a huge positive sign for K State to have Chris Tennant that confident again coming out of week one that's going to be one of the biggest things that coach is going to be talking about it coach climate of knowing that you have a field goal kicker who can make kicks like that especially after the struggles of last season you're going to need to make field goals in big moments that are deep and now they know they have a kicker who can do it. Junior out of Shawnee Kansas Mill Valley High School on the west side of the Kansas City Metro. One of the powerhouse schools in Kansas City head coach Joel Appleby. Quick strike Laurent. Right as that pass was coming in the direction of Hess. Jacob Parrish broke through some traffic and made contact with Hess and broke that up. That was a headsy play by Jacob Parrish. He saw this the entire way. Read the screen, shot out of a cannon, and broke it up. Motion the tight end, Danny Joyner. DeLorean throws it back across the field to that tight end, Danny Joyner. Pulled down at the 41 yard line by Will Lee. First down for the Red Hawks. You're going to see tight end Danny Joyner here on the right side. He's going to leak across and they throw back to him. That's a tight end play as teams have been running for a long time. The little sneak route by the tight end. Good play design there and good throw by Paxson DeLorean. It is 16. DeLorean again fires immediately as that ball is caught 
by Vic. He has dropped by once again, number 10, Jacob Parrish. Jacob Parrish is playing physical football out there. That is a physical corner, not afraid to tackle anyone. Usually those corners don't want to get it, don't want to mess with that at all. Watch him fire out of the cannon here. Knock the receiver back. I mean, this is a physical guy playing out there on the edge. That's been a question mark for this Kansas State defense, the corner position. But Will Lee, Jacob Parrish have come to play today. They've got to be happy about the future of the secondary. Vic, got to get to the sideline. Late flag flies in. Might have been a push, but we'll see if perhaps Payne was a little late getting there after Vic ran out of bounds. Or perhaps a hold. Holding, offense, number five. Ten yards, we spotted the foul. Second down. It's on Daryl Smith. Backup running backs. That sets Simo back to second down and 17. With Four minutes gone here so far in the second half for Manhattan. Looks Vicks way, looks back that way, now fires over the head of Flournoy. Late flag comes out there. Colby McAllister playing free safety for K-State was the closest to the football. Referee Henry Johns. Let us know about this penalty. Pass interference. Number 88 of the offense. Blocking downfield. 15 yard penalty. Still second down. Torian Anderson. Defensive pass interference. It looked like a miscommunication on the outside. That was a fake screen pass with the receiver going downfield. I don't think Dorian Anderson got the memo that it was a fake and he, he blocked for the screen route, the screen pass the entire way. So after getting a first down, at their own 41, now a couple penalties later, it's second down at 28, on the 23 yard line. And take off. Pulled down at the 37 yard line. Cornell and McAllister taking the quarterback, DeLorean, to the ground. That's the kind of stuff that Paxton DeLorean brings to the offense the ability to run the football. They're trying to limit that because they want to keep him healthy all year long. We talked to the coaches about that. But he's able to pull those, pull that ball, run as a quarterback, and get a big play for his offense. Yeah, he gained 14 and now makes it third down at 14. Four man rush. DeLorean throws it underneath. And he finds Mitchell Sellers. Pass complete to number 33. Some time here in the Sellers. second half. The tight end. His first catch of the game. But still about eight yards short of the first down. Fourth down. You can tell a lot about a defense by how they run to the football. You saw them rallying right there. Four guys bringing the runner down. That's what you want to see as a defensive coordinator. Your guys swarming to the ball. When there's a tackle, you want to see four or five guys all around them on the pile. Adam Heston has been busy hunting for Simo. Line drive takes a bounce at the 25 inside the 15. Brooks will let that roll and. K-State's going to have their worst starting field position of the game. And that is downed at the three-yard line. Hey, Big 12 now on ESPN Plus, your exclusive home for over 500 live games and exclusive content across the conference. Next Saturday, we'll bring you a college football triple header. Starts at 2 Central from Provo, Southern Utah and BYU. And the Mountaineers host to Kane at 5 Central, and we finish it off. 7 Central, Nichols taking on number 17. TCU, only way to get these games, sign up.
ESPN Plus dot com slash big dash 12. Well, Howard brings the offense back out there to start from their own three yard line. 38 nothing Kansas State nine minutes to play third quarter. Takes the handoff throws Garcia breaks the tackle. Garcia angling towards the near sideline and will be out of bounds at the 47 yard line at K-State. Joe Edrick Lewis and a couple of teammates were able to kind of angle him towards the sideline to get him out of bounds. But another long gainer of 44 yards for Garcia who's having quite a game. It was a run pass option. That ball's supposed to be handed off unless the linebacker bites up, which he does. R.J. Garcia slides in behind him. The Will Howard R.J. Garcia connection is off to a great start this season. Howard feeling that blitz coming and throws a little long, incomplete. Garcia wanting a flag there. Ball it looked like it was a little overthrown. And Lawrence Johnson there on the coverage. Yeah, I don't know. It looked like the contact got there a little bit early from Lawrence Johnson. You can hear the fans not too happy with the no flag. Lawrence Johnson's a guy for the SEMO defense. They use him all over the field. He flies around. When you turn on the film, you see number seven everywhere around the football. Ward bounced off one tackler, but then. Into the arms of Jacob Morrissey. Some help from Ally Walton. Jacob Morrissey. So the Wildcats looking at a third nine from their 48. The clock rolling in eight minutes to play in the third quarter. There's a blitz from the, the aforementioned Johnson and taken off. Howard comes to a slide across midfield. The 49 yard line of Simo. Fourth down from there and about six. You're going to actually see Bloomer punt the football for the first time, huh? And I got to believe. That'll be the last time we see Will Howard out there today. And a bounce of the 15 angle towards the sideline. Get inside the 10. I've been wondering about Keegan Johnson. Have not seen him. He's not dressed. Let's get more from Tori. What's going on with Keegan Johnson? Yeah, he's down here on the sidelines in street clothes. Asked around about him. I'm told he's just a little banged up. They're keeping him out just to be very careful with him since it's still early in the season here, guys. Appreciate the update on that. He's uh, the transfer from Iowa. And we were looking forward to seeing him as well tonight. But again, precautions. And he is. Street close tonight. K State, by the way, also uh, the starting free safety, Marquis Siegel, did not play tonight, not available, uh, and it's not an injury. Coach Kleiman said he'd address that situation after the game. Starting from inside their own 10, and there's going to be a flag thrown as Jace, I should say, uh, Keenan Garber. And the coverage of Vic there might have gotten there a little early. They're going to get Keaton, Keaton Garber for pass interference here. Pass interference. Defense, number one. Ball be placed in the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Garber's a guy who had been a wide receiver for K-State. He played like 31 of his 33 career games as a wideout, and they moved him to corner for the Big 12 title game. You know, how about that? play a new position on the other yeah, side of the ball and do it with a big 12 title on the line. They're excited about him. A lot of times those converted wide receivers to defensive backs are really good because they know offenses. They know how receivers run their routes and they can be really instinctual players. Jack Clinkenbeard who is a sophomore played 12 games last year mostly on special teams redshirt the year prior. He gets 
second catch of his career, first catch of the night. Second down and five for the Red Hawks. Trying to get something happen here. Again, they have 41 consecutive games where they have not been shut out by their opponent. Still plenty of time on the play clock. A lot of confusion here. Now, not so much time on the play clock. Down to two. They get it off in time. Hand off Hess. Got a tug behind the line of scrimmage, but then. Able to advance it up towards the 23 where he's met by Purnell and Kobe Savage. You know, Gino Hess is going to go on this year and run for a lot of yards for SEMO. Tonight, he has been the focus of attention. And I know it's probably been a frustrating night for him in the ground game for the Red Hawks. Well, we knew if this game was going to be close, it was going to be because Gino Hess and Ryan Fournoy had big nights. Fournoy with seven catches, but Gino Hess just can't get anything going. A testament to this Kansas State defensive line. Eight carries, minus two rushing yards right now for Hess. He gets a reception here. He's been doing some production, getting some production. Receiving the ball. That's his third catch of the game. And that's a first down for Simo. You know, has three time first team all Ohio Valley Conference, was the conference offensive player of the year last year. In his sixth year, he's one of two six year players on the roster for Simo. The other is on the Defensive side of the ball, we've talked a lot about, and that's safety Lawrence Johnson. You know, Hess has a lot of career numbers for SEMO. He's the OBC Male Athlete of the Year for the 2022 to 23 athletic season. He's on the Walter Payton Award watch list. That for FCS is for the top. Offensive player at the FCS level. There's a catch by Flournoy, wrapped up forward progress up to about the 42 yard line. Now, Simo, both teams came in ranked. Again, their preseason rankings. K State came in ranked at number 16, which is their highest preseason ranking since they were ranked 13th to start the 2004 season. In the FCS rankings, Simo comes in 11th in the preseason poll in the FCS. Red Hawks would love a first down on third and three to try to extend this drive. Hess wrapped up again. He'll lose a yard or two. K State saying the ball came out late, but. I think that's Kansas State ball. Ball came out. Yep. Well, Will Lee is the one who really came out with the football. It was a fumble. Recovered by the defense. First down, K State. And the officials oh, confirm the SEMO turnover, their first turnover of the game. See the defensive line get penetration here. The ball pops out, and Will Lee with a headsy play. The ball's laying there, no one sees it. Watch Will Lee here, number eight, on the right side of your screen, come in and just get on top of that football. Heads up play by the sophomore defensive back. So each team has now turned it over once. And K-State takes over at the 41 of SEMO. Still looking at the starters in there. Garcia started to come on the field, but realized uh, we can't play with 12 players. <laughs> so I'll turn back around. Well, I told you I'd be shocked if Will Howard plays another possession, and here he Early is. Early on the field of a fumble recovered by the defense. It's under further review. And that's going to go to the replay booth. It's manned by Jeff Hansen tonight here in Manhattan, along with his communicator, Ashley Biller. Mark, if I'm Chris Kleiman, 
I have seen everything I need to see from Will Howard today. I've seen, I've seen him catch a pass. I've seen him work through his progressions, use accuracy, use touch with the football, seen the connection with R.J. Garcia. I don't want to see him for another possession and risk an injury. Let's take a look at this fumble. See the ball out there on the middle left side of your screen. Will Lee gets on top of it. Looks like the elbow's down before the ball comes out. That's what they're looking at inside the pile there. Was he down before the ball came out? From that angle, it looked like it. Tell you what, the fact that you could see through all those arms and legs in that scrum. I was trying to figure out where the running back was. Yeah, that's, I, that's what I, I was trying to locate. <laughs> you know, Hess, and I, don't, I didn't think I could do it. Where's Gino? He's, see the left elbow right there. He's in the middle, number six right there, yeah. left elbow. Where's the ball? The is, ball, as it comes the ball out. is in it. Look, yeah, he's going to see, see the ball, left arm right there, middle of the screen, ball, elbow down, then the ball comes out. I think that, that one's going to get overturned. Uh, that's what I was going to ask. Is that enough to overturn it where the ruling on the field was a fumble? After further review, the runner's forearm was down before the ball came out. Ball be placed at that spot, fourth down and four. The 41 yard line for Simo. And you are correct, Anna Brittiman. It will be fourth down for Simo. Will they still maintain possession of fourth and four? And they are going to bring their punter, Adam Heston, out. Heston was able to pin K State back inside their own five on his last punt. If it comes through. 54 yard punt for Heston last time as Brooks is back at his own 20. Tight spiraling punt, fair caught at the 20 by Philip Brooks. So that's where K-State will take over. Will Howard will bring the offense back out. What a night it has been so far for the K-State quarterback. Question at quarterback is can you challenge the defense without turning the football over? The question right there is answered with a yes. Then he throws the interception after getting hit, but the rest of the night was flawless. Runs the football in. Is accurate with the football. You see the ball placement on this throw right here. Just dialed in, put right on the money. Allows RJ Garcia to run after the catch. And then the, the receiving touchdown. Put him all over the field. He's an athlete. Can make plays with his hands, with his legs, with his arm. Big night for Will Howard. And yeah, what a first half where he had a touchdown catch, touchdown throw, and a touchdown run. Only the seventh time in Big 12 history that's been done, and he did all that in the first half. Howard is going to come out of the game here with 3-12 to play in the third quarter. And true freshman Avery Johnson sees the field here to begin his collegiate career. Going to hand off. And for Treshawn Ward, no game. But back to that first half quickly for Will Howard. Here's the company he keeps for a player in Big 12 history that has the trifecta pass rushing receiving touchdown in a single game. Not surprised to see Jalen Hurts name on that list. Some big names Kitty on that great. list. Kitty Hill did it a couple of times for TCU. And you see Avery Johnson 6'290 pound freshman out of Mays High School in Wichita. Was rated by many services. Uh, Recruiting services is the top dual threat quarterback last year in the nation. Is it to Ward? Known for first and foremost speed. Can run like the wind, but did have almost 2,800 passing yards last year in his high school senior year with 29 touchdown throws. Ran for over 800 yards. It was a huge recruiting win when Kansas State landed this kid. He can really do it all. He's, he's athletic, 
talking to the coaches, they said he's a high processor. He's only been on campus for a few months, and now it looks like has won the backup quarterback job, the second quarterback in the game today. It's, a, it's impressive to win that job in just a couple months on campus. Showing some of the wheels here, and he'll run for a first down. Saw where the marker was, goes a yard past it, gets to the 32 first down pass. And you can hear the Kansas State crowd getting into this, seeing the quarterback, the young guy, use the wheels, tucks it and runs here, gets the first down with his legs, outruns everyone. And now in college football, when you have a quarterback like that that can create with his legs, it op opens up so much for, for the offense now. We'll see if he has the accuracy and the arm strength to play at this level. Anthony Frias comes in for the first time tonight in the backfield, and he's going to be used as a blocker for Johnson. We found a little crease, but is going to run for 12 plus again, about 13 or 14 there, up to his own 47 yard line. Anthony Frias here, number 26, makes this happen. Watch the lead block. Then Avery Johnson finds the hole, does the rest of the, of the work himself. Johnson, is he going to put it in the air for the first time? He does. A strike to Xavier Lloyd. As his first catch of the season, brought down by Ty Leonard, another first down. You see the pocket awareness here by Avery Johnson. He looks downfield, scans, steps up in the pocket, but keeps his eyes downfield the whole time. That's what you want to see out of a young quarterback, especially an athletic one. He didn't tuck the ball and run right there. He stepped up and delivered a strike. Looking to throw again and throws another. This one is caught inside the five yard line. Trey Spivey with his first collegiate catch. I just said we'd find out about Avery Johnson's arm and we found out these last few plays. Another great job of pocket awareness. First down inside the 15. Black stops as the quarter comes to an end. 38 nothing K State again. And a lot of the second teamers came in for K State. A lot of moving parts here, but one of those parts, great to see. Taylor Portier who's had two knee surgeries, missed all of the season two years ago, was hurt in the season opener last year against South Dakota, missed the rest of the season. And he is in the game now at right guard in for the starter, Hadley Panzer. Great to see Portier on the field, and hopefully for him a healthy and successful 2023. The carry to the six-yard line as Caro brings down Anthony Frias. Great to see Taylor Portier on the field. Yeah, he's been through a lot and talking to the coaches how excited they are for him to be back. He's had a great training camp, is fully healthy. Johnson keeps. Cuts. First collegiate touchdown. Avery Johnson on his first collegiate drive as a quarterback shows why he was one of the top quarterbacks rated last year out of high school. This guy is shifty and can move. Watch this. He's reading this the whole way. Will Swanson gets the lead block. And then he just jukes the whole defense out. Three guys around him. He jukes them out, steps inside. Avery Johnson's first game. Big 12 football is not too big for me. Seven-yard touchdown run for Avery Johnson. The QB run game just adds so much to this offense. You know, these coaches are going to be excited to have him in this system for so long. You see the juke move to the left, sticks the right foot in the ground. There aren't many quarterbacks that can make moves like that running the football. So an Avery Johnson touchdown run. By the way, Leighton Simmering came in, redshirt freshman to kick the extra point. And Avery Johnson leads an eight play 79 yard drive and 342 capped off by his seven yard touchdown run. And I know he's probably going to do many great things over the next 
four years or so here at K State. But you know what a lot of fans who were seeing him for the first time tonight are going to remember? That hair. That's some pretty darn good <laughs> salad right there, my friends. That's some good stuff, man. Yes. Folks in Wichita certainly know him. Mays High School. He was the 2022 Kansas Gatorade Player of the Year. The depth chart for K-State obviously had Will Howard as the starter, but it had Jake Rubley and Avery Johnson kind of both at, as the backup. So we'll see if we do see Jake Rubley at some point tonight as well. But Avery Johnson impressive with his first opportunity. Talking to Colin Klein, the, the thing that impressed him the most about Avery Johnson was just that he doesn't get flustered as a true freshman. I mean, again, this kid's 18 years old, first few months in college, and to be able to pick up an offense like this, it's impressive. And you see how fast he plays. A lot of times freshmen get on the field, and they don't play that fast. I mean, he was rolling out there and did not flinch with the bright lights on him. On the phone to his offensive coordinator, Colin Klein. This is Kavion Robbins getting his first oh, carry. Sophomore out of Sparta, Georgia. Chidi Obi Izor. Chidi able to come in and he's a true freshman. Eden Prairie, Minnesota. It's another true freshman getting in the game here for K State. Simo right now still only one rushing yard tonight. Well, it's picked up. DeLaurent fires and tipped off the hands of Flournoy. I tell you what. Toby Osen Sami number 44 was flying in there and he got knocked off his feet. <laughs> He was making a beeline for the backfield. Yeah, Osin Sami calls havoc. <laughs> he, he didn't get the sack, but just running over the running back like that forces the quarterback to roll out and just causes some havoc and confusion on the play. Osin Sami, who played four games as a true freshman last year, so four games they were able to redshirt him. Third and ten. Paxton DeLaurent finds his man for a first down at the 40 yard line. That's tied in Mitchell Sellers with his second reception That's of the night. That was a great throw by Paxton DeLaurent. Right in the middle of the zone, read it perfectly and put it right on the money. Any any miss from an accuracy standpoint on that throw it would have been incomplete. 15 yard gain up to their own 40. Look to the sideline and Robbins is the back. Joiner and tied in on the right side of the formation. Quick catch. That's Flournoy able to avoid the first tackler. Then it's an additional yard to the 46 before a true freshman Jack Fabris makes the stop. Number 36 for K-State. What a catch by Ryan Flournoy. He saw the ball away from his body, uses his hands, brings it back into his body to secure the catch. He has elite ball skills. He's going to have a big year catching the ball from Paxton DeLorean. Here comes the blitz. DeLorean able to get rid of it. Flournoy the catch. And it's an ankle tackle there by Colby McAllister to keep Flournoy from taking it even further. But a big pickup, first down, gain there of 15. First of all, great throw here, the pump fake by Paxton DeLorean. And then Ryan Flournoy, I just talked about his hands. A guy draped all over his back, away from his body. Catch in traffic. He's having a day today. Ten catches, 96 yards for Flournoy now. DeLorean throws and incomplete. Torrey has more on 
Four to one. Guys, you know one of the big honors in college football is to get an invite to the Senior Bowl. Now, Florida is just a sophomore, but he was put on the Senior Bowl watch list, which is a pretty big deal. K-State defensive coordinator Klandeman told us that he was the scariest guy on this SEMO team to him. There's only one other SEMO player that's ever been invited to play in the Senior Bowl, so that'd be pretty impressive if he got that invite. Adam, you were a Senior Bowl guy. I was. You did, you did your homework, Tori. I like it. <laughs> it's been did, a while since I played in the Senior Bowl. Went down to Mobile, got to play there for the Senior Bowl. Nice reception there, Vic. Ooh. Dorian Anderson, the wide receiver, helping out with a block there late. Out of contact, number five, Justice James. Transfer from Tyler, Texas Junior College. They're helping out. You know, Tori makes a good point. Talking to the Kansas State coaches, we were asking about a lot of players. They just kept mentioning Ryan Flournoy and his ability. He's a guy who, who could start and play at a lot of Power 5 programs. That's how talented he is. I would not be surprised if we see him in the Senior Bowl next year. Third down at 12. Line to gain is the K-State 28. Paxton the Lord fires off the fingertips of Vic who got spun around. Fourth and 12 you're down 45 nothing with 11 minutes to go. And no reason not to go for it here. If there is one bright spot for Simo right now it's been the passing game. Paxton to Lawrence 24 36 he's been accurate with the football hasn't turned it over. You got Ryan Flournoy with 10 catches today. The more day Vicks looked good. The run game has been what's hurt this offense all day. Delora on fourth down is going to be sacked. Back at his own 45 yard line by Nate Matlack, and that's where K State is going to take over on downs. Well, Avery Johnson had a very memorable first drive as a collegiate quarterback. How will drive number two go? Stick around. Back to Snyder Stadium as we say welcome to college football for Avery Johnson. Can he run the football? Yes, lead blocked by Robert Anthony Frias. Lowers his shoulder. Can he throw the football? Check. Delivers a strike down the field. And then the Dukes puts the right foot in the ground. Dukes back inside. Avery Johnson is an electric quarterback. For this Kansas State offense. He begins his second drive as quarterback at the 45 yard line of SEMO, and he's going to hand it off. This is Joe Jackson now getting his first carry. That's up by Malai Wolf. There's a flag that stops the clock. After the play was over, personal foul, face mask, defense, number six, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Number 12, the K-State can stay in the game because the foul took his helmet off. Henry Pickett's called for the personal foul. Fifth penalty called against SEMO tonight. K-State's been penalized three times, so penalties haven't been a huge issue in this game, which when you're talking game one of the season is something certainly to look at. Avery Johnson going to use his wheels fire on the move and throw a strike inside the 10 to Jace Brown true freshman to true freshman 16 yard gain first and goal for Jace Brown the freshman is first collegiate catch. That's exactly what you want to see from Avery Johnson. Feels the pressure, rolls out, but look at his eyes down the field the entire time. Not looking to run the football, a little bit of scramble drill. Jace Brown, another true freshman, comes back to the football with another great field awareness. He delivers a great throw for the first down. Jackson, Christian Furman will make the stop there for Simo. Christian 
A lot of new faces making their debuts here for Kansas State with the Wildcats up 45 nothing and nine and a half minutes to go. And that's the great part for the coaches in week one. You get a blowout. You can see the true freshmen a lot of these young guys who were the brights who are the lights too bright for and who performs well when they're on a big stage. Avery Johnson denied the end zone on a really nice tackle by Zykeef Johnson but he gets it down to the one and sh showed more of that great wiggle. You see him read this thing he pulls it. And then has great vision as a runner to bounce that to the outside. Tries to get in the end zone. When you have a QB who can run like this, it opens up so much for the offense because you can read everything out. You can read the defense, and if they go one way, Avery Johnson pulls it and runs the other way. Third and goal from the one. They bring in more, but that is well read, and Sam Cook blows that play up for Simo, dropping Joe Jackson for a loss. Sam Cook, his first year with Simo, played three years at Western Illinois. Interesting background from Africa originally. Adopted. Getting his chance here with Simo in year number one for him as one of their linebackers. Here comes the rush. Johnson flushed out, spins, comes towards the sideline, stepped out of bounds, and looked like inside the 10. Crowd thinking he may have scored, but did not. He's marked out at the seven yard line. We're on the field. The runner stepped out of bounds in the seven yard line. First down, Simo. Media timeout. Media timeout. So they turn it over on downs. Simo ball when we come back to Manhattan with 7.46 to play. Lon Kruger is from there, but so is Coach Tuke, who the class of 92, played for Silver Lake High School. He said that uh, K-State, he idolized the program. And that I said, what, were you recruited by Coach Snyder at K-State? He says, well, I was. He says, Coach Snyder sent Bob Stoops to recruit me he came over to Silver Lake, caught the first half, watched me play. Stoops left after the first half, and he said, I never heard from K-State again. <laughs> and he wound up going to play, and eventually also played and coached at Fort Hayes State. Has done a tremendous job as a head coach at SEMO. <laughs> he, he, he has some, some great stories off the field, too. And Torrey knows one. I mean, uh, just, just getting engaged was a, an interesting affair for Coach, too. Guys, he was cracking us up in our meetings this week. He was talking about being an underdog to repeat as OVC champs. He said, if you want Coach Tuke's best, put him in a corner and tell him he's an underdog because that's his lane. He said it took his wife two weeks to say yes to marry him and took her eight years to want to have a kid with him. That's how much of an underdog he is, guys. <laughs> he said it took two weeks. You, you, you proposed, and two weeks later she said yes. He, she, he, he said, well, I got her mom to come along, and I knew her mom wanted to marry her off, and she kind of put pressure on her, and she said yes. That guy's a one of a kind, man, and what a coach. Coach, too. Uh, this isn't going to be a great night for Simo, but this is a team that is the preseason favorite, the OVC Big South. It's all about persistence, man. Yeah. Persistence. Third and 13. There's a direct snap. Patrick Heidert is the quarterback in now for DeLaurent. Heidert started the two final games of the regular season last year when DeLaurent was out with the foot injury. So a three and out here. Sam Cook, offensive linebacker, I should say outside linebacker for, for Simo. If he's going to come back on the field. Brooks from the 43. So good starting field position for K-State. It's just over five and a half minutes to play in game number one. The 2023 NFL Draft. The Dallas Cowboys select Deuce Vaughn. Running back, Kansas State. 
So K-State selects Deuce Vaughn. The gentleman there in the bottom left-hand corner is his father, Chris, who works for the Cowboys, and that's the war room after they made the selection for Deuce Vaughn. And understandably, Deuce's dad, Chris, very emotional moment for him. And this is how the night started tonight. Some of the players from last year that have moved on for K-State brought out the trophy. Felix there holding it up. Deuce Vaughn right there at his side. And they were able to uh, unwrap the, the oh, banner of Big 12 now. champs. How have the Big 12 champs, Will Howard now their starting quarterback officially here in game one. How have they done here in their uh, game one of the season? Yeah, and the big question mark was who replaces the guy you just talked about, Deuce Vaughn. And I think those questions were answered tonight. DJ Giddens showed that he's not just a power back. He can run down the field, 128 yards rushing. Treshawn Ward had a good night. Joe Jackson. Flag down though. It'll be a hold here against the Wildcats. All right, with just under five minutes to go, I'm going to stir the pot here a little bit, Adam. Holding. Offense number 75. Ten yard penalty. Still second down. And this is probably unfair to do this for Avery Johnson, who's just now leading his third drive yeah. of his collegiate career. But what he has shown me, us, and everybody here through the first two drives, I'm already thinking. He's going to play more than four games this year. Yeah. Yeah. This is this isn't a guy who eventually is going to redshirt this season. It's not at least not to my eyes. Yeah. And if I know Colin Klein, he's as creative as they come as an offensive coordinator. Will Howard's your quarterback, right? Like, there's no disputing that he brings things to the table that most quarterbacks don't. From an arm talent standpoint, from an awareness and accuracy standpoint. But Avery Johnson undeniably can bring a spark to your offense. So I think they'll use different packages, maybe on the goal line, maybe at some of the quarterback read stuff. Maybe, just maybe, Mark, we'll see Will Howard and Avery Johnson on the field at the same time. That, that's, not, that's not a ridiculous statement either. It could happen, and I know Colin Klein is creative, and I think he'll find a way to use Avery Johnson because it's a good thing for the offense. Well, leading up to this game, as we were prepping for it and talking with both teams and knowing K-State, Johnson here, gonna throw a screen pass a little too far, incomplete. We thought if the game played out the way it has and if K-State had the opportunity to start bringing in young players here in the second half and giving them some time, Avery Johnson is the first name I think that popped on our tongue. I, yeah, we, there's a lot of these new players we want to see. Avery may be at the top of that list. And, kind of showed us why those first two drives and you can see why he's such a big time recruit why so many teams around the country wanted him the, the other part of the quarterback run game is schematically when your quarterback can run the football it gives you another blocker normally the quarterback's handing the ball off and standing back there when the quarterback can run you have the running back and the other players blocking for the QB. They call it the plus one run game because you have plus one blockers than you normally have so having Avery Johnson run the football is is a big help for this offense. Jack Bloomer's punt is down at 12 yard line. 346 to play. Simo ball when we come back. Check it, check it, check it, check it out. Introducing the new and improved taste of Pepsi Zero Sugar. Now more delicious. Zero never tasted so good. Try it now. Rally House. Shop every team in town. College and pro, come on, it's time to go. Get ready for kickoff, KC. Rally House has the game day gear you're looking for, including Chiefs sideline gear and the latest college styles. Kansas, Missouri, Kansas State. Chiefs and Royals make KC great. Rally House, Rally House, it's your safe place to go. It's your city, it's your house, it's a Rally House. Gear up in-store and online at rallyhouse.com. Um, you know with the new Rivalry Riches instant ticket from the Kansas Lottery, you're supposed to scratch both sides. Well, suit yourselves. But with Rivalry Riches, you could scratch your way up to $50,000. Just be sure to play both sides. what a job he's done in year one. The Wildcats are headed for the Elite Eight. NBA 3. Bang! He got it! Where would you rather be, Bill? 
in Bramlage Coliseum. The Wildcats program is back on track. The coaching matters, and they got the right guy. I promise y'all, one day we're going to have a great new Manhattan. Started at 12, running 11 deep. And dropping down since 9-6. What happened when the Big A met the Southwest? Seven Heisman's. Count them. With six at the net, five on the floor, and four schools stronger. We put up threes, throw up deuces, and make one thing clear. We've always been greater than 12. Kansas State's offense has 588 total yards so far tonight with 346 to play. That 588 total as it stands at this moment is fifth most total yards in a game in their school history. See if they get the ball back or not as Simo takes possession with 346 left from their own 11 yard line. Patrick Heidert. Patrick Heidert the quarterback second series for him. And he's going to throw on first down and fires a strike to the far side wrapped up at the 20 yard line there by Jalen West picks up eight on first down. The two numbers that stand out to me about Kansas State today. 8.3 yards per play and 16 yards per completion. Those are big numbers. We talked about explosive plays earlier in the in the broadcast how important that is they they had. 14 explosives today of 15 yards or more when you have plays like that it helps your drive so much and they're going to need those explosive plays throughout the rest of this schedule. And Simo has gone 41 consecutive games without being shut out so that streak in danger of coming to an end with under three minutes to go now. Daryl Smith. Senior from the St. Louis area, Alton, Illinois, with the carry and enough for the first down. The thing that's been fun to see today on all the quarterbacks we've seen from Will Howard to Paxton DeLaurent to even to even Avery Johnson is how they use their arm and the arm angles they throw with to manipulate the defense and get guys open. Quarterback used to be just about standing in the pocket and throwing the football down the field, but we've seen all those guys almost play shortstop right you're rolling out of the pocket you're sidestepping in the pocket having good awareness and then using arm, arm angles to deliver the ball down the field and all those guys are really good at that and create at the quarterback position which is why it's so fun to watch. Daryl Smith it's the carry once again and a little bit of a crease there and he advances for 11 yards in a first down. The big boy Kobe six killer lead in the block there pulling around the edge. Next up for SEMO they will host Lindenwood in their conference opener next Saturday night. You can see it on ESPN plus in fact eight of the 11 games for SEMO here on ESPN plus. So if you're not a subscriber Red Hog fan sign up at ESPN plus. A state will host Troy next Saturday before they head to Mizzou the following Saturday. Smith. How much there. What is Simo going to take away from this one. Yeah I think there's a lot you can learn from it. One the running game's got to get figured out. I mean, the, the rush rush game was abysmal today but the positive is that a lot of your best players came to play Ryan Flournoy 10 catches 96 yards Paxton DeLorean played good football 24 36 213 yards passing they made plays on a big stage against a really good defense the best defense they'll face all year so you know you have the playmakers to make a run at a conference title again. Gino has had 10 carries for minus four yards but it was very apparent Adam that K State basically said we're not going to let you guys yeah. run the football tonight. Yeah their, their defensive line the linebackers the front seven just absolutely dominated this football game from the very start. Under 30 seconds to go a third down let's see how adamant Simo is not getting another playoff here. 
doesn't look like they are interested. So K-State wins the opener. 45 nothing. And a lot of positives for the Wildcats here for their home opener. Yeah, you got to feel good about Will Howard. He's the quarterback of the future. He made great throws today. Other than the one interception, took care of the football. You you answered the question mark about Deuce Vaughn, and then that receiver, Philip Brooks with six catches. Ben Sinnott, the tight end, with a career day. You have the playmakers to repeat as Big 12 champs. Fun night from.